Ever sleep eight hours and wake up exhausted but feel amazing after just five? Your body is heavy after a full night's rest. Your mind is foggy. You hit snooze three times and still drag yourself out of bed. But then there's that other day. You sleep for six hours, maybe even five, and somehow you wake up sharp, alert, ready. And you wonder, what's the difference? Here's what nobody tells you. It's not just about how long you sleep. It's about how you sleep. And more importantly, when you wake up. Because your brain doesn't work on a simple timer. It works in cycles. And if you wake up at the wrong point in the cycle, it doesn't matter if you slept for 10 hours. You're going to feel terrible. Today, I'm going to show you how sleep actually works, why you can feel more rested on less sleep, and how to hack your wake-up time so you never feel groggy again. Because the truth is, you don't need to sleep longer. You just need to sleep smarter. Your brain goes through different stages every night, and understanding these stages changes everything. When you first fall asleep, you enter light sleep. This is stage one and stage two. Your body starts to relax, your heart rate slows down, your brain begins to quiet. This is the easiest stage to wake up from. If someone calls your name, you'll hear it. If your alarm goes off, you'll wake up feeling okay. Not amazing, but okay. Then you go deeper. Stage three is called deep sleep. This is where your body does most of its repair work. Your muscles recover, your immune system strengthens, your brain clears out waste. But here's the thing. If you wake up during deep sleep, you feel awful. Your body isn't ready. Your brain is still in maintenance mode. That's why you feel disoriented, heavy, like you're moving through mud. And then about 90 minutes after you fall asleep, you enter REM sleep, rapid eye movement. This is where you dream. This is where your brain processes emotions, consolidates memories, and make sense of your day. REM sleep is lighter than deep sleep, so if you wake up during REM, you feel better than waking up during deep sleep, but you still might feel a little off, a little scattered. The best time to wake up? Right at the end of a cycle, when you're transitioning from REM back into light sleep. That's the natural waking point. That's when your body is ready. And here's the key. Each cycle lasts about 90 minutes, so instead of thinking in hours, Think in cycles. If you sleep for seven and a half hours, that's five complete cycles. You'll wake up at the end of a cycle and feel refreshed. But if you sleep for eight hours, you're waking up in the middle of a cycle, 30 minutes into deep sleep or REM, and that's why you feel like garbage. This is why sometimes less sleep feels better because you're waking up at the right time. So here's what you do. Count backwards in 90-minute cycles from the time you need to wake up. Let's say you need to wake up at 6 in the morning. Count back. 4.30, 3, 1.30, midnight, 10.30. If you fall asleep at 10.30, you'll get five cycles, seven and a half hours. Perfect. If you fall asleep at midnight, you'll get four cycles, six hours. Still good. But if you fall asleep at 11, you're waking up mid-cycle, and that's when you feel terrible. Now, you might be thinking, but I can't control exactly when I fall asleep. And you're right. Most people take 10 to 15 minutes to fall asleep. So add that buffer. If you want to complete five cycles and wake up at 6, get into bed by 10.15. That gives you time to fall asleep by 10.30. But here's the truth. This only works if you actually let yourself sleep. And that means removing everything that's destroying your sleep quality. Let's talk about what's stealing your rest, because you can be in bed for eight hours and only get four hours of actual quality sleep. First, your phone. If you're scrolling before bed, you're telling your brain to stay awake. The blue light tricks your brain into thinking it's still daytime. Your body stops producing melatonin, and even if you fall asleep, your sleep is lighter, less restorative. Second, your room. If it's too bright, too warm, or too noisy, your body can't go into deep sleep. You stay in the lighter stages all night. You're technically asleep, but your brain isn't resting. Third, caffeine. If you drink coffee after two in the afternoon, it's still in your system when you go to bed. You might fall asleep, but your deep sleep gets cut in half. You wake up tired because your body never fully recovered. And fourth, alcohol. People think it helps them sleep, and it does knock you out, but it destroys your REM sleep. You spend the whole night in light or deep sleep, skipping the stage where your brain processes emotions and memories. 
so you wake up feeling off, anxious, unfocused. And fifth, stress. If you go to bed with your mind racing, your body can't relax. You might lie there for an hour before falling asleep. And even when you do, you're waking up constantly. Your sleep is fragmented, broken. So if you want to wake up refreshed, you have to remove these blockers. And that starts hours before you go to bed. Here's the system. Two hours before bed, dim the lights. Your brain needs darkness to start producing melatonin. If your room is bright, your body thinks it's still daytime. One hour before bed, no screens, no phone, no TV, no laptop. Read a book, stretch, journal. Let your brain wind down. 30 minutes before bed, cool down your room. Your body temperature needs to drop to fall asleep. If your room is warm, you'll toss and turn all night. Ideally, your room should be between 60 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit. And right before bed, do a brain dump. Write down everything on your mind. Tasks, worries, random thoughts. Get them out of your head and onto paper. This signals to your brain that it's safe to stop thinking. Then, and only then, get into bed. And when you do, don't lie there. If you're not asleep within 20 minutes, get up. Do something boring. Then try again. Because your bed should only be for sleep. If you train your brain to associate your bed with scrolling, worrying, or lying awake, it'll keep doing that. But if you only get into bed when you're ready to sleep, your brain learns, and falling asleep becomes automatic. Now here's the part most people miss. It's not just about when you go to bed. It's about when you wake up and how you wake up. If you wake up to a blaring alarm in a dark room, your body goes into shock. Your cortisol spikes, your heart races, and you feel terrible for the next hour. But if you wake up gradually with light, your body eases into wakefulness. It's natural, smooth. So here's what you do. Set your alarm for the end of a sleep cycle, like we talked about, but also use light. If you can, open your curtains before bed so natural light comes in at sunrise. Or use a sunrise alarm clock that gradually brightens your room 30 minutes before you need to wake up. This mimics the natural way humans are supposed to wake up, with the sun. And when your body sees light, it stops producing melatonin and starts producing cortisol, the wake-up hormone. So by the time your alarm goes off, you're already halfway awake, and getting out of bed feels easy. But here's the final piece. What you do in the first 10 minutes after waking up determines how you feel for the rest of the day. If you grab your phone and start scrolling, you're flooding your brain with information before it's ready. Your cortisol spokes even higher. You feel anxious, scattered. But if you move your body, even just a little bit, you wake up your nervous system in a healthy way. Stretch, do 10 push-ups, walk to the window and look outside. And then, within 30 minutes of waking up, get sunlight, real sunlight, not through a window, step outside for two minutes. This resets your circadian rhythm and tells your body it's daytime, be awake. This one habit alone will make you feel more alert during the day and sleep better at night because your body runs on light. And when you give it the light it needs at the right times, everything else falls into place. So let's put this all together. You don't need eight hours of sleep. You need complete sleep cycles. Five cycles is seven and a half hours. Four cycles is six hours. Even three cycles, four and a half hours, is better than seven hours if seven puts you mid-cycle. Calculate your wake-up time. Count backwards in 90-minute intervals. Add 15 minutes to fall asleep. That's your bedtime. Two hours before bed, dim the lights. One hour before, no screens. 30 minutes before, cool your room. Right before bed, brain dump. Then sleep. And when you wake up, do it at the end of a cycle, with light, and move your body within 10 minutes. Do this consistently, and you'll wake up feeling more refreshed on six hours than you ever did on eight. Because sleep isn't about quantity. It's about quality. It's about rhythm. It's about working with your body, not against it. Most people fight their biology. They stay up late under bright lights. They drink coffee at five in the evening. They scroll in bed. They set random alarms. And then they wonder why they're tired. But you're not most people anymore because now you know how sleep actually works. And once you align with it, everything changes. 
you'll have more energy, more focus, more clarity, not because you're sleeping more, but because you're sleeping right. And that's the difference between feeling tired and feeling alive. This isn't about sleep. It's about taking control of your day before it even starts. Most people let their mornings happen to them. They wake up whenever their body decides. They fight through the fog. They wait for coffee to save them. But you, you're designing your wake up. You're choosing when your day begins. And when you control the first moment, you control everything that follows. If this changed how you think about sleep, hit subscribe. Because the difference between feeling tired and feeling alive isn't more time in bed. It's knowing when to get out of it.